स्वैग से करेंगे सबका स्वागत स्वैग से करेंगे सबका स्वागत Welcome to the special broadcast on India Today. I'm Akshita Anand Gopal. We're in G20 week and I know a lot of you are wondering what's the big fuss about the national capital, about how Delhi has changed. I'm here at the IGI airport as you can see. I'm going to be taking the route that our G20 world leaders are taking to show you how much things have changed. If you've ever been to Delhi, get set because you're not going to recognize half of the roads that I'm about to show you. Obviously, it'll be a lot less crowded for our world leaders, but I'll do the best I can to show you what their experience is going to be like going through Delhi. Let's go. So making my way out of the IGI airport, what I see first is a lot more lighting. I came out in the night on purpose because I was told Delhi is a lot more beautiful because it's all lit up now. You can see that there are a whole lot of posters everywhere saying welcome G20 delegates. So you've got a lot of the G20 theme being thrown in your face at every single point from the get-go, from the IGI airport. But let's go further down. Uh, if you get out of the airport, you're going to reach Dolakwa. What's the location like there? How are things really decked up? How have things changed? Let's take a look. A few minutes, we'll be there. The theme of our G20, the motto, is, as you see written here, Vasudeva Kutumbakam. And it's very fitting, really, because we're celebrating India's culture, celebrating India's traditions. The government has made, uh, has put a firm focus on all of that, as you'll see in posters and banners all around you, if you've been to the national capital at this time. So let's take a look at how culture and tradition is currently being highlighted. It's a man-made marvel. It's not on a natural waterfall that I'm standing. I was actually taking the turn to come out of the airport when I spotted this. This lovely fountain or waterfall, whatever you want to call it, has been built on both sides of the road. So you've got one here, you've got another one on the opposite side of the road as well. Beautiful, beautiful welcome for our G20 guests, for all of these world leaders who I have no doubt will be wowed by this kind of a setup. Imagine this all lit up as it is right now and we're being told that more lights are going to be put up here. It's so beautiful and this is one of the many welcomes, one of the many fountains that you'll see along the IGI airport stretch. But by far, this one takes the cake for me. Delegates will be landing at the IGI airport. Many dignitaries will be landing at the Palam airport, which is where you've got the Prime Minister, the President, all of them come and go from. For security reasons, obviously, that area will look completely different. But all of your world leaders will be travelling through this very stretch. And you can see that this junction has been completely transformed. It's been in the works for many, many months now. Some people would argue it created quite a bit of inconvenience, but look at the end product. It's absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. From these mammoth lion statues that you see in every single corner of this junction to also huge fountains that adorn this entire area. This part that leads out of the IGI airport and directly into the city has been completely decked up and spruced up. Don't forget that again here too, I see a lot of G20 advertising. There are billboards which are constantly displaying promos and advertisements for the G20. So as we continue to move further into the city, what does it look like? I've shown you what the IGI airport stretch uh, looks like all decked up. Let's go into the city and find out what the situation is there. crucial Dolakwa junction which looks completely different from how it usually does. 
This entire area, as you can see here behind me, has massive fountains all lit up completely. This is just one stretch that I'm managing to cover. But even on the other side, you've got massive such walls that are completely filled with fountains, with messages welcoming delegates of, as part of G20. In fact, this entire road right now, you will see a lot of such posters celebrating India's diversity, highlighting some of uh, our biggest uh, tourist destinations and some of our most popular tourist states, along with these kind of beautiful fountains that have been put out. I'm going to be traveling further to show you how, in fact, in the heart of Delhi, there are several very interesting, beautiful murals that have been put up. We made our way here to Sadar Patel Mark. What's crucial here? And why do you see so much decoration around me? Right opposite ITC Moria. That's where US President Joe Biden is going to be staying. You see a lovely G20 setup here, along with several pictures that have been put up saying India paving the way, we're healing the world through yoga and whatnot. Beautiful messages. Entire area lit up completely. And you see the lighting on ITC Moria on top also. You can see the tricolor there reflected onto the building top. You see it there on the left of the building. Beautiful setup here. This entire stretch is where all of the hotels are. So along Sardar Patel Mark, there's a lot of security, but the area has been spruced up with these kind of posters being put up, decked up completely. All of the hotels back to back is where our world leaders will be staying. I just showed you one where uh, the US president is going to be put up. culture, India's tradition, India's beauty, all being displayed on the streets of the national capital. As I'm heading closer and closer to the Bharat Mandapam, which is where the actual G20 summit will be held, here's what people, delegates who are traveling through the streets of Delhi will see. These kind of murals have been put up in several underbridges on the walls. You see this depiction here of uh, the Mahabharata. On my left, different dance forms from across the country, from Bharatanatyam to Kathakali to Kuchipudi. I see so many others as well, all depicted here. And what's wonderful to see, which I keep highlighting, is that they've taken the beauty of every single state and highlighted it as part of G20. Let me show you something. We'll go around here because I don't want you to miss out on the other aspect also of what has been covered in this particular portion. On this side of the underbridge, where you see some traffic also going through, there's a depiction of the Ramayana. There's Lord Ram, uh, Lord Hanuman, Lakshman and uh, Goddess Sita, all of whom are projected right here in this particular mural that's been put up here. I'm not sure if I can see it clearly, but yes, you can see all of them present here. Goddess Sita is not there, but yes, this is the Ramayana portrayal that's been shown in this particular spot. Beautiful, beautiful murals that adorn every part of Delhi. But these particular areas where, you know, a story of India's culture, a story of India's tradition is all being shown. I don't know whether I should say India or Bharat, but yes, this is what in fact is seen on the way to Pragati Maidan. I'm very close to Bharat Mantapam, but look at these beautiful murals. reasons we're not allowed any closer to the Bharat Mantapam we've been taken we've taken special permission so we can at least stand across the road and shoot this beautiful sight besides the lighting I want to bring your focus into what we've zoomed into there that ladies and gentlemen is the world's tallest Natraja statue right now on display beautifully lit up 28 feet tall that's the statue that's right in front of Bharat Mandapam and will greet every world leader as he or she walks in to be a part of the G20 summit. It was just installed a few, uh, in fact, just about a day or two ago. And now we're getting you the first glimpse of what it looks like seated there in the heart of Bharat Mandapam, along with all of the flags that you see of the G20 nations participating and 
that beautiful, beautiful lighting that I can't take my eyes away from. Sometimes it lights up in the tricolor, sometimes in full white light, but those spotlights essentially grab all of your attention. I'm absolutely thrilled since I've come here in the night and because of security reasons, we're not able to go right across and shoot from there. But this view is a great view. I'm not complaining. And we just go to sight of the Nataraja statue as well. Our destination. This, ladies and gentlemen, on my right is the beautiful, stunning Bharat Mantapam. As you see there, written in big bold, lit up so beautifully. It's stunning and truly a sight to behold. This entire Pragati Maidan stretch has been decked up like never before. I can tell you that from my journey from the airport all the way here, which is exactly where our world leaders, when they touch down for the G20 summit, will be traveling, I can tell you that this by far is my favorite favorite stretch because it's entirely lit up. The Bharat Mantapam is visible from kilometers away because of the massive spotlights that they're using here. And then you've got these G20 logos all through this entire stretch. It's no wonder that so many people like me are also stopping here, taking selfies, clicking pictures at the Bharat Mantapam because this truly is an icon right now for India, a national icon that we will remember far beyond the G20 summit as well. This is where all of the action is going to be. And of course, on the G20 day, we're going to be right here getting you all the updates of what's happening behind as the summit takes place on Saturday and Sunday. We're all set for the G20 show in Delhi, but let's get you some of the features that you need to know about what it's taken to spruce up Delhi in this matter. Now, it's been 1,000 crore rupees that's been spent overall in revamping the national capital and making it as beautiful as it is right now. Security is a big concern. 1.3 lakh police officials will be deployed, and not just police actually, but security officials across the board who will be deployed across Delhi. Now, delegates from across the world, besides world leaders, will be coming. So 3,500 rooms in Delhi and in Gurugram have been booked for these delegates. Remember that the main event is going to happen just some kilometers away from me in Pragati Maidan. And there, the Bharat Mantapam has been revamped, built at a cost of 2,000 crores to accommodate the main G20 summit. The best hotels in the country, not just in the national capital, have been picked for ensuring that the world leaders have a place to stay that's absolutely world class in Delhi during the G20 summit. I'm standing here at the Sardar Patel Marg outside the ITC Moria. It's here that US President Joe Biden is going to be residing. So this entire stretch, there's high security, but we get you a sneak peek inside, not just outside where you see also a lot of reflective lights put up on the ITC Moria building. And this is the situation most of the hotels where you've got some of these VVIPs and the world leaders staying. Now, let's show you what's happening inside. The kind of preparations that are happening in these hotels, what kind of food will be offered, what are the suites looking like right now for these presidents and prime ministers who will descend here in the national capital. Over 30 hotels, more than 3,500 rooms. New Delhi gets ready to host the world's most powerful leaders. More than 10,000 hospitality professionals are engaged to serve delegates who arrive to attend the G20 summit. Luxury hotels including ITC Maurya, Taj Palace, La Meridia, Shangri-La are all decked up to host the head of states. A Rudraksh that you can definitely see is part of the mala, mm -hmm. considered to be very auspicious mm -hmm. for prosperity and health. So this is a fusion of uh, Indian tradition and culture. Absolutely, in sir. The hospitality. Absolutely. You'll see everywhere in the hotel, uh, the G20 and one earth, one family, one future. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the motto and this is the vision that I think the country is with at the moment and we want to continue with this. And I think we are very privileged as a group that after doing G20 meetings in most of our hotels across the country, we are able to host two good friends of our nation. From comfort to food, Delhi's luxury hotels are leaving no stone unturned to give the leaders the best experience. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, a famous local dish of each state will be served to the guests. Uh, Mustakji, if you could 
elaborate this uh, this this amazing experience that you've set us and how the people who will be here at Taj, how you guys will be hosting them, if you can explain. Like we have got a spread of food which includes Indian, Western and uh, we have promoting uh, millets also over here. Uh, the delegates which will be coming, it, we are catering to international guests also. Mm -hmm. So we have incorporated the food, like we have multiple dishes over here. So we are showcasing our Indian food also, we are showcasing the international food also. A mix of Indian and Western cuisine is finalized. Many of the dishes millet based in line with Narendra Modi government's big push for millet. Taj Hotel's head chef Arun Sundaraj, who served several heads of states in the past, says all arrangements are in the place. You know, we've got dishes which are millet based uh, so that we can actually showcase ki millet mein, uh, you know, what all things you can do with millet. Hame millet ke kya kya kar sakta hai. I would say Tayari is, uh, is very, very strong. Uh, kafi, uh, काम किया है हम लोग ने और काफी टाइम से प्लानिंग कर रहे हैं इसके बारे में कि हम किस तरह के यू नो टिशेस सर्व करेंगे व्हाट एक्जेक्टली वी आर गोइंग टू सर्व द लर्म एरेडिया टू हैज अ वेल प्लान वेलकम प्रिपेयर्ड जी ट्वेंटी की तैयारी आज नहीं शुरू हो रही एक साल से तैयारियां शुरू हो चुकी हैं जी ट्वेंटी के लिए तो बहुत खास मेहमान है और हम चाहते हैं जैसे हमारे हमारे प्रधानमंत्री बाहर जाते हैं उनका इतना अच्छा स्वागत होता है वी फील सो प्राउड अबाउट इट तो हम चाहते हैं कि जितने हमारे गेस्ट आए उनको भी बहुत अच्छा वेलकम दिया जाए इतना मेमोरेबल एक्सपीरियंस दिया जाए एंड इंडिया इस नोन अतिथि देव भव जो हम हर अपने एम्प्लॉय को भी सिखाते हैं हर टाइम विश्वता सिंह अनामिका गौर आशुतोष मिश्रा एंड श्रेया चैटर्जी फ्रॉम डेली Bureau Report, India Today. So I know that there's a lot of concern that we're going to see a lockdown, a shutdown in Delhi over the G20 weekend. Now officials have confirmed several times it's not true, but there are some restrictions that you have to keep in mind. Shreya Chatterjee has been tracking that very closely, getting us constant alerts on advisories put out by the Delhi police. So Shreya, why don't you break it down for our viewers? For Delhiites who are watching this broadcast, for anyone who's traveling to Delhi over the weekend, which are the areas they simply cannot go to? Well, you know, Akshita, this is not really a lockdown. That's something that we need to understand. However, the Delhi police has been requesting that if you have to make emergency travels, use the metro as much as you can. The reason for that is that only if you're a bona fide resident of NDMC region, you will be allowed to travel in that region and if you have a valid uh, card to prove it. If not, it's better to just avoid the New Delhi zone and uh, probably travel through metros because of the movement of all these important people who will be there in the region. There can be route movement changes any given time. So it is better to avoid. In cases of emergency, you can obviously use it. But uh, if you are not a bona fide resident of uh, the New Delhi area or a resident of Delhi, you will not ideally be allowed to travel uh, even if you have a private vehicle. So there will be checks, right? And you'll have to prove uh, that, you know, you're going there for a reason. Yes. yes. That's essentially how it works. Right? Absolutely. Like, for example, if there is a medical emergency, obviously that will not be stopped. That will obviously be allowed. But if it's not a reason which is uh, viable or falls in that essential or emergency category, and if you're not a resident where you need to go to your house, say, I mean, there will not be any allowance given to you. So it is better to travel the metro, use the metro as much as you can because that's been kept open majorly. Is the, is the metro functional completely though? Yes, the metro is completely functional except for the Pragati Maidan, the Supreme Court station, obviously, because that's a sensitive zone. They have also identified 39 sensitive metro stations, say, from the Palam stretch uh, to some in the central uh, zones. Given the movement of the convoys, there might be some 10 to 15 minutes entry exit halls, but large Largely, all of these stations will stay open. And what about public transport besides the metro? Are you going to see buses, autos, cabs, all of that plying? Mostly, if it's, for example, uh, what we always want to talk about is the app-based taxi service. You have your valid IP card, like if you're a journalist or uh, if you're probably in the essential service category, if you have to uh, rush for your hospitals or something, you have your IP card, you can travel in the app-based taxi service. But another thing, if you're using our own cars, we need to understand that on-road parking that we can usually do at different times will not be allowed this time. I mean, because in that zone will be secured, Parking will be a little issue, so you have to keep in mind these 
make minute changes, but essential services will not be affected. Okay, that was very helpful. Thanks very much, Shreya, for breaking that down for us. So you heard it from Shreya, who's been tracking everything that's coming from the Delhi police, that uh, there will be some inconveniences. There's no doubt about that. There are some restrictions, but there's no question of it being a lockdown. So let's tell you what will be closed in Delhi for the G20 weekend. Government and private offices will be shut. Anyone who's working has already given a directive to their employees to be on work from home. Schools and colleges also have been shut as per a directive from the government. Now the Supreme Court will also be shut. It's a weekend, so that really is not going to affect anyone because the courts are anyway shut over the weekend. Banks will be closed. They're not going to be working this Saturday. Now shops and malls will be shut, but only in some areas, particularly in central Delhi, in parts where the world leaders will be staying. And of course, Pragati Maidan, what's referred to as the NDMC, New Delhi Municipal Corporation Limits. Kunnot Place, Khan Market, uh, you've got uh, Janpat, Palika Bazaar, all of these prominent parts, recognizable names of New Delhi, all these areas will be shut over the weekend. Retail liquor stores, but again in the central Delhi area, will be closed. Besides that, three-seater autos and taxis will not be allowed to ply in the heart of the capital. Let's tell you what's open at this point. Delhi Metro will be functioning. There will be some stations where there will be no stops, but otherwise Delhi Metro will be functioning up and about. Buses on Ring Road will be plying. There was a lot of concern about whether Ring Road in Delhi will be closed off. That's not the case. Essential services will be available. And what I mean by that is groceries, the next point of medical services, all of that will be available no matter where you are in Delhi. Malls and markets outside of the New Delhi Municipal Corporation limits. Uh, if you live in any other part of Delhi, you're going to have full access to it. The theme of our G20, the motto, is, as you see written here, Vasudeva Kutumbakam. And it's very fitting, really, because we're celebrating India's culture, celebrating India's traditions. The government has made, uh, has put a firm focus on all of that, as you'll see in posters and banners all around you if you've been to the national capital at this time. So let's take a look at how culture and tradition is currently being highlighted. Delhi is shining. From roads to intersections, from trees and plants to lighthouses. As India hosts leaders of G20 nations, who together account for 80% of the global GDP, we are showcasing our country's rich culture. From exhibitions to decorative sculptures. India's heritage is on display. The G20 summit motto, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, also echoes India's ancient philosophy. One earth, one family, one future. Every guest attending the G20 meeting in Delhi will get a glimpse of India's tradition at every step. Whether it's the murals of Ramayana and Mahabharat on the walls or images of sages and saints. Whether it's the reflection of folk art or customs. Even hotels are extending a traditional welcome to the G20 guests. With kumkum, tilak, aarti and honours. के डेलीगेशंस के लिए सारी तैयारी यहां पर हो गई जैसा कि आप देख रहे हैं कुछ इसी अंदाज में जब यहां पर वो डेलीगेशंस के लोग आएंगे तो स्वागत होगा आपने देखा यहां पर जो इंडियन कल्चर रहता है किसी को शॉल पहनाकर या टीका लगाकर और दिया लेकर उनका वेलकम करते कुछ इसी अंदाज में हर्ष हमारे साथ है हर्ष कुछ इसी अंदाज में करने वाले हैं हम वेलकम सो so, बिल्कुल वेलकम हम जो हमारी एक ट्रेडिशन है आप सबने सुना होगा अतिथि देवो भव सो uh, so, हमारे जो गेस्ट हैं दे आर नथिंग लेस देन गॉड और ताज की वैल्यूज़ रही हैं ताजनेस इसी में बिलीव करता है दैट uh, हम अपने गेस्ट को एक भगवान के तरीके से उनकी मेहमान नवाजी करें और उनका स्वागत करें सो so, उसी स्वागत के लिए हमने uh, ये चीज़ें जो भी आपने एक्सपीरियंस करी हैं हम उनका स्वागत एक बिल्कुल राजा के जैसे करने वाले हैं विथ uh, बहुत सारे uh, नगाड़े रहेंगे बाहर म्यूजिशंस हैं लोकल uh, आर्टिस्ट हैं uh, और फिर उसके साथ हम उनकी आरती करेंगे विथ दिस पीकॉक थाली एंड पीकॉक कुछ राइट पिकॉक थाली ये तो मतलब इसको भी देखने लायक है तो ये ये आ, कुछ स्पेशल है जी ट्वेंटी के लिए यस सो ये स्पेशली हमने कस्टमाइज करवाई है बिकॉज पिकॉक बींग आर नेशनल बर्ड 
पिकॉक बींग अ नेशनल बर्ड ऑल्सो पिकॉक अगर आप देखेंगे हमारी पूरी लॉबी में और डेकोर में दिस अ लॉट ऑफ पिकॉक बींग यूज इन द डेकोर पेंटिंग्स मोटिव्स सो इसी से इंस्पिरेशन लेके हमने ये कस्टमाइज करवाई है गेस्ट वाइल्ड चेकिंग इन विल बी गिफ्टेड विजय अंती माला एंड रुद्राक्ष माला सिम्बलाइजिंग प्रोस्पेरिटी एंड पीस इस माले को आप पहनाने वाले तुलसी माला राइट तो यानी हर कुछ वो आपने इसमें शामिल किया है जिससे इंडियन कल्चर शो हो चाहे वो नगाड़े हों या ये आपने जिसका जिक्र किया ये शॉल हो पिकॉक वाली थाली हो ये सब जी ट्वेंटी के लिए स्पेशल है हंड्रेड परसेंट दिस इज स्पेशली डिजाइन फॉर जी ट्वेंटी whether hotels or event venues at every step in india from their accommodation and food to sightseeing guests will get a feel of indian traditions with arpita arya and ashutosh mishra bureau report india today bharat's culture on display we just showed you a glimpse of that but look at these murals behind me this is an example of that and you'll see many of these right now in the national capital on the way to pragati maidan this particular wall is showing you the ramayana one particular part where you've got lord ram you've got uh, lord hanuman all of them present and also a very very nice depiction there a painting uh, of lord ram and ravan now let's also get you this conversation that my colleague anjana umpashup had with the culture minister minakshi lekhi on the top behind showcasing india's culture delhi is all set to host g20 and we're just in front of bharat mandapam which is going to see a lot of action with uh, the top leaders of the world coming here in the coming days and we have with us mos external affairs minakshi lekhi how are you prepared and uh, it's it's always said that in the in the last few days uh, coming up to the g20 celebrations and the meetings there'll be a lot of activities happening how are you geared up how is the government of india how is the ministry of external affairs dealing with it how are you prepared and how are you looking forward to it you know it's like 100 meters in a marathon so last 100 meters matters so you're both uh, excited and anxious so that is the situation that uh, we are all geared up we work very hard everyone's put their best foot forward but the last uh, mile delivery matters and we are we are all geared up for that what is the message from the prime minister of this country because narendra modi is actually overlooking is what we are being told looking over everything, everything minutely every every single thing uh from decorations to gifts to food to uh you know uh, every presentation has gone to him decorations and food yeah yeah, yeah. and the gifts and, and the gifts i mean that that's that's the kind of person you're dealing with um, and and anyone can get a call in the middle of the night that no 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 this needs to change and take it back redo it so we heard there's a lot of focus on millets and a lot of things yes so, so short example a small example uh so when we were planning the spouses program in that program it was you know uh, people as we all end up being would talk about fashion would talk about um, all that uh, they feel women are interested in uh, but uh, no 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 it has to be a substantial engagement So in substantial engagement the first time we are taking them to Indian Agricultural Research Institute where we are going to showcase the antique uh, uh, grains of India which is millets and uh, how it is leading to sustainability and good health how it is linked to the earth's health how it is linked to water conservation and the top of the line labs which have made india i mean iari has made us all uh, atnirbhar when it comes to food security yeah. and we are not only producing uh, food for ourselves which is 1.4 billion indians but are able to give it to other countries like afghanistan and several of our neighbors and friends so so that's the strength of india so first engagement is that and second engagement we have uh, an exhibition which is called roots to roots r o o t s to r o u t e s that is the foundational uh, message of our civilization to roots which we have taken to spread the message all across uh, through a uh, 5000 plus years of so showcasing india in a big way in front Absolutely. of all of them in view of china not coming experts around the world are saying that it's because of india's growing stature in the world that china or xi jinping has chosen to stay back in the sending li kiang how do you look at it 
so i would say people are looking at china from a very uh, short term perspective i mean they are looking at maybe 70 years um, or uh, 50 years or that time period but historically uh, india has had uh, uh, very many exchanges with china including sanskrit was taught and learnt uh, martial arts went from here a uh, whole lot of them were uh, from sanatan parampara um uh, uh, khotan was habited during ashoka period by indians so uh, a long term perspective always matters to people like us a uh, short term perspective is probably not giving the complete picture so so delhi looks absolutely beautiful right now already all decked up for the g20 summit the countdown is on and here on india today we're going to continue getting you every single update and ground reports of how the national capital is bracing for the big g20 summit thanks very much for tuning in news and updates continue on the other side this is me akshita anand gopal signing off with video journalist abhishek kumar और आज मैं आपको मिलाने वाली हूँ बॉलीवुड सुपरस्टार से लेकिन पहले देखते हैं उनकी आने वाली फिल्म की झलकियाँ ये तो शुरुआत है गुड टू गो गर्ल्स हाय मैं हूँ शाहरुख खान आपके लिए लेकर आया हूँ मेरी नई फिल्म जवान और मेरे साथ हैं आज तक ए आई थैंक यू शाहरुख अच्छा बताइए मुझ में और आप में कौन सी बात कॉमन है hmm, वैसे तो बहुत कुछ होगा लेकिन आप बताइए ना चलिए मैं बता देती हूँ शाहरुख खान और मुझ में ये बात कॉमन है कि हम दोनों हमेशा जवान रहेंगे <laughs> बिल्कुल वैसे एक और बात कॉमन है कौन सी आप सब ने दोनों का नाम तो सुना होगा थैंक यू शाहरुख वैसे आपका चार्म देख कर तो मेरे ए दिल में भी कुछ कुछ होता है और हाँ I am also 100% ready for Jawan with the King Khan. 7th September को आपके नजदीकी सिनेमा घरों में hmm. Are you ready? officially as per the article 2 of the constitution of india we are officially bharat and our another name is india we are bharat we were bharat uh, the name of our motherland were bharat it is bharat it will be bharat but you have a actually in documents are we going to see a document article 2 of the constitution of india i am reading from document india that is bharat that is the bullet word President the opposition says you're worried. India Alliance worried you. India Alliance mean what? India Alliance ka saath Bharat ka kya sambandh? What is the relation between India Alliance and Bharat? Usme darne ka kya hai? How, why we need to panic? Republic of Bharat ka nikhe kya jorat hai? Republic bhasa the English, British or British or ki bhasa English bhasa. To Mahamahim ab Bharat kyun nahi kehte? Mahamahim Bharat kyun nahi kehte ab? Aadha Angrej. आधा भारतीय ये क्यों आपको लगता है अच्छा होगी मुझे ये लगता है इंडिया नाम से आप डरे हुए हैं प्रधानमंत्री खुद इंडिया नाम से डरे हुए हैं और आप थोड़ा गौर करके देखो कि जिस दिन से इंडिया नामक गठबंधन बने हैं हमारे देश में मोदी जी की नफरत इंडिया के खिलाफ बढ़ते गए हैं However there's some bad news for India's high flyers airlines in India will soon be increasing air fares after the government jacked aviation fuel prices up by 14% effective today even as lpg prices were reduced earlier this week airlines have found themselves at the receiving end with atf prices raised by nearly 14000 rupees per kilometer 
This is the steepest hike ever and the third hike in a row. With global prices firming up, ATA prices have risen by 22,116 rupees in the past three months. Airlines are expected to pass on this increase to customers by raising the airfares right at the doorstep of the festive season. Karishma Sudani now joins us for more details on this. Karishma, what impact are you really seeing of this move on airfares, especially as the festive season is soon approaching? Well, right, OMCs have announced this 14% hike uh, in its jet fuel, which is the aviation turbine fuel. In fact, it is on the 1st of every month that they do revise their rates as per the international crude oil prices, which have been quite on a high, thus impacting this mega rise of 14%. We spoke to certain airlines and on off-record source basis, uh, airline officials have shared with us that uh, a hike in ATF will not directly impact uh, a hike, uh, uh, expected hike in air fares uh, because uh, though there is an increase in the operational input cost uh, the tariffs cannot just be worked out or uh, revised as per one of these uh, components or elements but however since the festive season is fast approaching and it's uh, the season of long weekends uh, airlines are expecting that there could be a further uptick in terms of the air fares uh, uh, because of the higher demand Delhi is shining. From roads to intersections, from trees and plants to lighthouses. As India hosts leaders of G20 nations, who together account for 80% of the global GDP, we are showcasing our country's rich culture. From exhibitions to decorative sculptures, India's heritage is on display. The G20 summit motto, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, also echoes India's ancient philosophy. One earth, one family, one future. Every guest attending the G20 meeting in Delhi will get a glimpse of India's tradition at every step. Whether it's the murals of Ramayan and Mahabharat on the walls or images of sages and saints, whether it's the reflection of folk art or customs, even hotels are extending a traditional welcome to the G20 guests with kumkum, tilak, aarti and honours. कि डेलीगेशंस के लिए सारी तैयारी यहां पर हो गई जैसा कि आप देख रहे हैं कुछ इसी अंदाज में जब यहां पर वो डेलीगेशंस के लोग आएंगे तो स्वागत होगा आपने देखा यहां पर जो इंडियन कल्चर रहता है किसी को शॉल पहनाकर या टीका लगाकर और दिया लेकर उनका वेलकम करते कुछ इसी अंदाज में हर्ष हमारे साथ हैं हर्ष कुछ इसी अंदाज में करने वाले हैं हम वेलकम सो so, बिल्कुल वेलकम uh, हम uh, जो हमारी एक ट्रेडिशन uh, है uh, आप सबने सुना होगा अतिथि देवो भव सो uh, so, हमारे जो गेस्ट हैं दे आर नथिंग लेस देन गॉड और ताज की वैल्यूज रही हैं ताजनेस इसी में बिलीव करता है दैट uh, हम अपने गेस्ट को एक भगवान के तरीके से उनकी मेहमान नवाजी करें और उनका स्वागत करें सो so, उसी स्वागत के लिए हमने uh, ये चीज़ें जो भी आपने एक्सपीरियंस करी हैं हम उनका स्वागत एक बिल्कुल राजा के जैसे करने वाले हैं विथ uh, uh, बहुत सारे uh, नगाड़े रहेंगे बाहर म्यूजिशंस हैं लोकल आर्टिस्ट हैं और फिर उसके साथ हम उनकी आरती करेंगे विद दिस पीकॉक थाली एंड पीकॉक कुछ राइट पीकॉक थाली ये तो मतलब इसको भी देखने लायक है तो ये ये आ, कुछ स्पेशल है जी ट्वेंटी के लिए यस सो ये स्पेशली हमने कस्टमाइज करवाई है बिकॉज पीकॉक बीइंग आर नेशनल बर्ड 
पिकॉक बींग अ नेशनल बर्ड ऑल्सो पिकॉक अगर आप देखेंगे हमारी पूरी लॉबी में और डेकोर में दिस अ लॉर्ड ऑफ पिकॉक बींग यूज इन द डेकोर पेंटिंग्स मोटिव्स सो इसी से इंस्पिरेशन लेके हमने ये कस्टमाइज करवाई है गेस्ट वाइल चेकिंग इन विल बी गिफ्टेड विजयंती माला एंड रुद्राक्ष माला सिंबलाइजिंग प्रॉस्पेरिटी एंड पीस इस माले को आप पहनाने वाले तुलसी माला राइट तो यानी हर कुछ वो आपने इसमें शामिल किया है जिससे इंडियन कल्चर शो हो चाहे वो नगाड़े हो या ये आपने जिसका जिक्र किया ये शॉल हो पिकॉक वाली थाली हो ये सब जी ट्वेंटी के लिए स्पेशल है हंड्रेड परसेंट दिस इज स्पेशली डिजाइन फॉर जी ट्वेंटी whether hotels or event venues at every step in india from their accommodation and food to sightseeing guests will get a feel of indian traditions with arpita arya and ashutosh mishra bureau report india today quality today in delhi 127 in mumbai 72 in kolkata 23 in bangalore 29 in chennai 53 in hyderabad 21 Delhi is fully ready now to host the biggest leaders of the world this weekend and days after Russian president Vladimir Putin and his Chinese counterpart president Xi Jinping announced their decision to skip the G20 summit in Delhi external affairs minister S Jay Shankar has downplayed their absence stating that Xi and Putin not coming will not impact the summit hitting out at the opposition block and slamming G20 criticism Dr Jay Shankar roared that the opposition can stay stuck in 1983 if they cannot praise the progress of their own country jay shankar with all the pride highlighted how india has a reputation of being a very constructive and stable player and has a great deal of global goodwill i think uh, at different points of time in g20 you know there have been some presidents or prime ministers who for whatever reason mm -hmm. have chosen not to come themselves uh, but you know that country and that country's position uh, is obviously reflected by whoever is the uh, representative uh, on on uh, that occasion uh, so you you had you know some occasions where you had uh, you know a president or two sometimes three uh, who who have not uh, uh themselves come but i i do think you know my my sense from talking to the ministers certainly and i know the sherpas are in touch with each other they are right now uh, trying to hammer out the final uh, document i think everybody is coming with a great deal of seriousness there have been g20 summits before no other g20 presidency made an effort to get together the developing countries who are not on the table and say please come sit with us tell us what are your concerns and we will distill those concerns and place it before the G20 that's a very unique exercise nobody has done it before mm. so if we have taken the trouble and we meaning here prime minister modi himself mm. you know if 125 countries have been consulted feel today yes what we told india India has promised us that they will put that issue on the table. I think they have a lot of expectation of India, uh, and the as far as the rest of the G20 is concerned, 
they know that look we have always in G20 outside the G20 India has a reputation of being a very constructive player uh, you know someone who bridges divides who kind of somewhere helps to fix uh, problems so so the there's a there's a lot of goodwill that we have if somebody felt that they were most comfortable in Lutyens Delhi or completely comfortable in Vigyan Bhavan that's their prerogative that was their world so yes you have had summit meetings where the impact of the country probably went two kilometers uh, on a good day out of Vigyan Bhavan this is a different government it's a different era it's a different thought process uh, a prime minister felt and you know all of us have uh, worked in that direction that the G20 is something which should be treated as a national uh, endeavor. This is an era where the opportunities can be very global, where the problems also, as we saw during COVID, can be global. So uh, we need to, uh, you know, as part of the transformation of India, we need to create a global awareness in this country. And I think the G20 has been very, very helpful in it. Uh, and you know for those who uh, you know have feel that we should be stuck in 1983 i mean please you are welcome to be stuck in 1983 i'm sorry the country has moved on we are in 2023 so india that is bharat it is there in the constitution mm -hmm. please i would invite everybody to read it i i think uh, when you say uh, bharat in a sense uh, a meaning and a understanding and a connotation uh, that comes with it and that is reflected in our constitution as well. that is Bharat it is there in the Constitution mm -hmm. please I would invite everybody to read it I, I think uh, when you say uh, Bharat in a sense uh, a meaning and a understanding and a connotation uh, that comes with it and that is reflected in our Constitution as well Isro Jisne Chandrayaan ka mission bheja kya wo gulami ka pratik hai Isro mein jo aai hai India क्या उसको बदलेंगे आईआईटी जहां से हमारे छात्र निकलकर विश्व भर के कंपनियों के सीईओ बनते हैं क्या वो आईआईटी में आई का जो इंडिया है क्या उसका नाम बदलेंगे क्या आईआईटी क्या कॉलोनियलिज्म का प्रतीक है तो इसीलिए भाजपा आज इंडिया अलायंस गठन होने के बाद उनके मन के अंदर एक नई नफरत जाग चुकी है A grand glittering view of the G20 summit venue in New Delhi. This is the Bharat Mandabam, decorated with the colors of the Tiranga, all set to welcome the world's 20 most powerful leaders. A 28 foot Natraj statue, believed to be the world's largest, has also been installed too at the entrance of the convention hall. The statue symbolizes Lord Shiva as the Lord of Dance and his cosmic power of creation and destruction. The roads leading up to Bharat Mandapam are all decked up. As a citizen of India and a resident of Delhi, I look around, I feel very, very proud and nice because half the time you won't, everybody wants to live in beautiful surroundings, everybody wants cleanliness on the roads, everybody wants decorations and sculptures and lighting and greenery and flowers and uh, decorations all over. So it's a, it's a very proud moment, uh, especially for uh, residents of Delhi. Har wo sambhav प्रयास किए हैं जो एक उभरते ऐसी महाशक्ति के रूप में नए भारत की बुलंद तस्वीर आपको इस हॉल से भारत मंडबम से 
इस 123 एकड़ के आईटीपीओ के सेंटर से आपको देखने को मिलेगी कि हर तरह की सुविधाएं देने का प्रयास किया है ब्लेंडिंग ट्रेडिशन विद मॉडर्निटी इज द सेंट्रल थीम मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर विल होस्ट एंड स्पेशल एक्सिबिशन ऑन भारत द मदर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी फीचरिंग इंटरक्टिव पैनल ऑन वेदास किंग अशोका एंड ग्रांड इंडियन लोकसभा इलेक्शन Indian epics like Ramayana and Mahabharata, Jain and Buddha Dharma, Kautilya and accounts of foreigners like Greek traveler Megasthenes and Chinese traveler Fahim will also be part of exhibition. In a bid to enhance the experience of international delegates, a G20 park has also been set up. The park features sculptures of member states and their national animals is curated on the waste to art theme G20 is not only global summit but also a showcase of india's culture and pride your report india today Make your media plans smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag dot com. How do you really see India playing a role, particularly as you mentioned, uh, at a time of global conflict? Historically, uh, we've always been for peace. Some of our biggest leaders, uh, some of our uh, you know most influential faces, historic figures, have always propagated peace. India is a land of peace, essentially. So now that we're hosting the G20 summit at such a crucial juncture, uh, when there's a Russia-Ukraine conflict as well, how do you really see Sri Sri India's role in that? See, India's voice has always been said, and we are very sensible in whatever we are saying because we are just and sensible. That is, this is something that world has started to notice. Number one, we are sensible, and we cannot be bullied. Number two, number three, we are very sensitive. We are sensitive to the feelings and to the emotions of people of the entire world. you know and the, and the mindsets so we in this country have embraced such diversity see we have a communist government in one part of the country and we have multi party democracy which is not present in anywhere else in the world there are bi party democracies but we have so many parties and then on top of it we are the largest population in a country that, that the world is seeing today and young population and Very so true. so we have a lot of things to offer to the world of course i would say spirituality is the need of the world today when there is so much of distress and aggression and depression mm. uh, that is clogging the youth population Dr Ravi Kanan a seasoned oncologist has won the prestigious Maxese award 2023 for his contribution to the health sector years ago Dr Kanan left his home in Chennai 
to work amongst the people of Silchar to fight cancer. He's our good news today story. Dr. Ravi Karnan, a renowned oncologist and a hero for holistic healthcare, has helped hundreds of underprivileged cancer patients avail treatment. Assam-based Dr. Karnan, who has been awarded the Padma Shri, has won the Ramon Magsese Award 2023 for his contribution in the health sector. Award, my name is Hospital of 450 colleagues. Our society is my society. यहाँ पे बड़ा फैली के सिटीजन भी है जो हमारा मदद करते हैं सबका जो मेल है ना इसके कारण कुछ भी होता है इसका इस इस ह्यूमन कोलैबोरेशन का ये रेगुलेशन है In early 2000s, Dr. Kannan visited Assam as a guest surgeon several times. His life was in Chennai, but after meeting Kalyan Chakraborty, the head of the Kachar Cancer Hospital and Research Center, Dr. Kannan decided to help people of Silchar fight cancer. But a bigger battle was awaiting him: myths about cancer. People would come for consultation, but nobody wanted treatment. In 2012, Dr. Karnan performed first surgery and proved the patients can win against cancer. इतने साल हो गए किसी ने मेरे से नहीं पूछा आप क्यों आए किसी ने नहीं पूछा आप इधर के नहीं हो कभी भी always look at what will benefit society. अपना benefit देखेंगे तो इतना मजा नहीं आएगा. But आम community का medical मेरा benefit देखेंगे ना तो at the end of the day Today, Dr. Karnan's hospital in Silchar is considered one of the best for cancer surgeries. Bureau Report, India Today. Make your media plans smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag dot com. begin with the G20 summit what are your expectations the big takeaways you've been uh, in a lot of meetings your officials have been in a lot of meetings but the challenges for india are many mm -hmm. particularly to do with the outcome document do you see an outcome document or the objections from china from russia how how's that going to play out well first of all india's uh, leadership has been wonderful to show off this country to bring so many people here i've been so impressed with india's leadership But secondly, I think you'll see real substance and you'll see values. How those play out, we don't know yet. But the values are that we stand up for principles we believe in: women's empowerment, anti-poverty, health, but also for us, the invasion of other countries that there should not be a world of aggression and violence. But that shouldn't stop us from working on all of the things that we prioritize, whether it's the environment and climate, whether it's looking at the world economy, whether it's looking at debt for countries in the developing world. I think you're going to see substance that couldn't have happened if we didn't have months and months of meetings that have been very successful curated by India across India and I'm very optimistic that we'll see some good things come out. In terms of objections if you could just uh, detail out what are the objections that China has raised or for that matter Russia when it comes to the text of the outcome document. Well it depends at different times uh, both have raised issues with the language that reflects what there was a consensus last year in Bali on which is that there can be a footnote for those countries um, or country but that the rest of the world clearly sees aggression knows aggression and stands against aggression then you move on to the rest of the substance because uh, even a war of aggression shouldn't stop us from talking about health the economy looking at the climate and other strategic considerations so um, we are hopeful that that will be the formula that will be successful it's on the chairs uh, you know responsibility to bring that together but i have a high level of confidence that india's relationships with multiple nations can bring that together and i hope that other countries will defer to india's leadership when you host you should be able to bring some priorities um whether it's the prime minister's life initiative that looks at the way our behavior affects the environment uh, or the focus you've had on a digital public infrastructure and looking at the ways you can 
empower people even at the lowest economic levels uh, by new technology. Is there a bilateral that has been set up for uh, President Biden with Prime Minister Modi? The schedule is not set yet. I expect there to be one. There's such a warmth and friendship. There's, I think, going to be five to six times our leaders are together face-to-face -face this year alone. I know the President's very excited to see the Prime Minister, especially here in India. He's been here many times, but this is the first time he's coming as President of the United States. So I expect not only do they want to see each other, but I know behind the scenes we're working on an agenda as ambitious almost as the state visit in deliverables on education, on defense, uh, on our two new consulates, on visas on technology and those things really that our people care about and need us to continue the progress. You just, um, you just mentioned defense, so on the bilateral front, uh, the GE jet engine deal, where does it stand? We know that the notification has been sent by the administration to the Congress. Will it go through? Uh, will it be approved? Well, it's gone from good news to being on the verge of great news. Uh, over this weekend, Monday, Indian time, will wake up and doesn't look like there have been any objections, nor will there be from Congress. And I think when you saw the congressional delegation come here, you had Republicans and Democrats. In the United States, they don't agree on much these days. They agree on India. In some ways, India unites us in the same way that America unites many Indians. There's a bipartisan consensus, so I think that we will see great happen next week. Okay, great happen next week, but uh, there is another area of a bit of a concern for India, which is the Tahavarana extradition case, three years uh, and counting. Um, will he be extradited? Home Minister Amit Shah said it on the floor of the House in Parliament that we are looking at an extradition, but a U.S. court stayed uh, the, the, the yeah, extradition. That wasn't unexpected, um, and I'll let the legal process play out, but we've had great cooperation in years past. We didn't always cooperate closely enough, and sometimes those extraditions didn't occur or cases didn't go forward because this is an unprecedented era of Indian law enforcement and American law enforcement working together on counterterrorism, drugs, um, gangs, other things where they've worked really well together, but we hadn't always. Now it's a new day. Hmm. And so uh, we've always thought it was likely it would go to the final court. That will happen, I think, October. His lawyers give the argument in November, our government will respond, and we do believe that people need to pay the price, and we do believe in a sex tradition. And you're confident that it'll happen? You know, I'm not in the courts, but I'd be surprised if it doesn't. Okay. And finally, the India-China bilateral talks took place, a pull aside, an informal conversation, uh, but on the ground we've not seen major breakthrough. How is the United States of America looking at Chinese aggression at the borders with India? Well, we're India's friend. And we're here to support India, as we have in the past, uh, whether it's the border or other places strategically, that India asks for our help. And we engage with China as well. But we will not sell our principles, and you don't sell your principles for those engagements. We want good relations with China. We want stability in those relationships. But as your own leaders have said, there are certain lines, uh, both literal and figurative, uh, that need to be dealt with. And we're incredibly supportive of that. We never look at engagement as a bad thing. Uh, that's for two countries other than us to do, but we support that and we support our friend in any way that they need. Ambassador Garcetti, many thanks for joining us here on Arch Tak. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Great to be with you. Your delegation is uh, uh, due to visit. Any expectations from the EU-India uh, relations? Well, I think we are going through a particularly happy moment in EU-India relations. The past few years we have seen great strides. We have seen the decision to uh, resume the negotiation on the free trade agreement. We have seen the visit of the President of the Commission in 2022. And we have seen the setting up of the Trade and Technology Council, an extremely important tool that brings together ministers from the Indian government and uh, two vice presidents of the European Commission to discuss issues such as um, the security of supply chain or, or green technologies. So issues which are particularly important for the future India, the European Union, and uh, I think main countries of all. So I, I think we are at a moment where uh, we are really um, achieving um, a target set in terms of uh, cooperation and collaboration. What could the G20 really do in ensuring security in the realm of food and energy when the world is grappling with the worst crisis ever? Well, I think it's important we, we look at the causes um, of the rise in uh, food uh, prices. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, this is the outcome of a deliberate Russian policy. 
We have seen now also Russia withdrawing from the uh, Black Sea Grain mm -hmm. Agreement. Uh, we see Russia bombing uh, the Ukrainian ports and storage facilities. So there is um, a very deliberate action uh, directing at making um, the uh, steady supply of grains from Ukraine uh, impossible. This affects uh, a large number of nations, particularly uh, poor nations, particularly in, uh, in Africa. Uh, that's why as the um, European Union, uh, we believe that the international community needs to come together and make it clear to the Russian leadership that um, it's not acceptable to resort to this sort of tactics. Uh, that we need to resume the uh, Black Sea Grain Agreement. Since the Bali summit, where we saw consensus, a document come through, for India and India's presidency, there have been 19 ministerials, not a single joint communique or an outcome document with consensus. Uh, the Russia-Ukraine war is certainly an aspect, but also China. There are impediments and challenges. What's your reading on the challenges that India has had to face? Well, unfortunately, we are living through a very erratic moment. Uh, and international relations. Uh, we are not in a business as usual environment. Uh, we have a, a rational aggression ongoing in Europe, a rational aggression against Ukraine, which is continuing, uh, causing unspeakable uh, loss of lives and uh, damage, having a clear effect on food prices and energy prices. And let me underscore this. Uh, this is the, the result of a deliberate Russian policy. So all this clearly makes the circumstances very difficult for the Indian presidency. Um, and um, what is happening uh, with this aggression is uh, relevant for the G20. Uh, issues such as the increase in food prices, the risk of, uh, the risk of food shortages uh, in Africa, for instance, uh, that's a very relevant issue for also for the G20. So we cannot simply um, ignore the fact that we are living through uh, a very particular moment in history. And um, unfortunately, um, the Indian presidency has to, um, has to cope with that. These, these issues affect also the G20. New synergies are developing between Argentina and India, one being a bright spot in Asia, and other one in Latin America. With growing cooperation in multiple sectors, the two countries are now looking towards a promising future together. And to talk more on this, I have with me Argentinian ambassador to India, Dr. Hugo Xavier Gobi. Uh, thank you for your time, sir. Oh, thank you for allowing me to be with you, share our views, and, uh, and well, it's a great honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, how do you see India's presidency for G20 this year, and uh, uh, how important it is for countries like India, Argentina, or emerging economies? Well, India has proposed a very ambitious and action-oriented agenda, a very inclusive agenda. It has started the presidency by a, a calling all of the leaders of the Global South to share their, their uh, to ask them what, how India could uh, help them during this presidency. And then uh, India proposed a very ambitious uh, uh, agenda, uh, very much oriented towards development. So I think, uh, and has been very wise in pushing that agenda forward, and uh, we, Argentina, backs fully India's uh, agenda. So, Bob, what are the big challenges you think that world is facing today? And once this summit is over, do you think we'll be having you know, solutions to those problems? Well. It, you know, problems you can improve and, mm. uh, uh, and they can get worse. You never totally solve uh, issues in the social dimension. And, uh, but I think it will be a, 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 India's presidency will be a big step forward for mm. the development agenda. And that will be seen in the next f uh, years uh, to come as, uh, as the guidelines that were proposed. Uh, will have impact in all the, all the financial and multilateral institutions of the world. And how do you see, sir, G20 discussions addressing food and energy crisis, which seems to be fueling because of this um, ongoing tensions between Russia and Ukraine? Well, 
if food and energy crisis were uh, it, it is a it is an issue that of course has an impact on on the global south and we're very much worried and and uh, and the uh, war in, in in ukraine has uh, not uh, it, it has made it a spike on on that situation uh, India is proposing an agenda that w will uh, ta to tackle the main uh, issues that are more structural because uh, food and energy pri prices, uh, volatility, it has a uh, structural dimension and India is uh, in, uh, uh, um, uh, looking to solutions for that. I think uh, uh, that and climate change are very, very significant issues that worry the global south very much and that having a huge economic uh, impact. Your Excellency, how do you uh, view India's push for global south and how important it is for countries like India, Argentina and other Latin or Asian you know, countries? Well, India has a leadership role in the, in the global south and we have seen that with uh, the way India uh, uh, opened the floor, opened the G20 presidency, uh, uh, calling on all the countries of the global south to share its, uh, its ideas and to ask for inputs to be put in the agenda. It has been playing a, a very significant role and, uh, and, uh, w uh, and we think that it will have an impact on <coughs> development, on sustainable development and uh, that will take into account the social, the, the, the environmental and the economic dimensions of uh, development and uh, uh, we fully back in this, in this position. It's, it's significant for all of us. And what according to you are going to be the big deliverables uh, you know, from this coveted G20 summit? Oh, the, on, on, uh, well, the agenda is very, very large. It talks about financial issues. It talks about uh, development, the role of development banks. It talks about, uh, how do you call it, uh, culture. It talks about education. India has really found a way to, uh, to push forward global cooperation and, and find many, many uh, uh, issues that uh, many proposals and issues that could uh, have a, a, an agreement in very difficult circumstances because uh, the geopolitical situation is very tense and, uh, yeah, and India played a very intelligent and wise role to get, reach uh, agreements that are, are very substantive in, in all areas from education, culture, uh, uh, anti-corruption, uh, 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 finance, um, cli in cl in climate, trade, in all areas India has looked for consensus and has found significant delivery. One last question sir, uh, can you tell us uh, that whether Alberto Fernandez, uh, Argentinian uh, president, Will he be attending the G20 summit? Oh yes, our president, the president of Argentina will be here and uh, will have a, 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 a very significant participation in the thing and will be here backing uh, uh, Prime Minister's Modi agenda. Thank you. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you. In New Delhi with Amit Badwar, this is Rahul Gautam for India Today. भारत सरकार का मंत्री यहाँ आपके बहुत सारे चैनल्स के नाम भी भारत से शुरू होते हैं तो इनवाइट भी अगर भारत से नाम से तो इससे किसी को परहेज क्यों होना चाहिए ये भारत विरोधी कौन है भारत का विरोध कौन कर रहा है 
क्या अब नाम से भी दर्द होना शुरू हो गया इनको देश से बड़ा दल नजर आता है और ये राजनीति के दलदल के चक्कर में इसमें फंस के ये कई बार देश का भी एक तरह से बाहर की धरती से भी बदनाम करने का छवि खराब करने का काम करते हैं और यहाँ पर भी देखिए इसमें कोई बड़ी बात नहीं है आप बहुत सारे इनवाइट पे देखते होंगे भारत सरकार के द्वारा निमंत्रण भेजा गया है तो यहाँ कहाँ दिक्कत अगर आपको लिखना था तो आपको लिखना चाहिए भारत की राष्ट्रपति प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ भारत क्या है मतलब कुछ भी करेंगे आप अपने राजनीतिक एजेंडा की पूर्ति के लिए और दूसरी बात यह है कि यह कहीं ना कहीं बाबा साहब डॉक्टर भीमराव अंबेडकर का घोर अपमान है क्योंकि बाबा साहब ने जो संविधान लिखा उसकी पहली धारा उन्होंने लिखी इंडिया दैट इज भारत सेल बी यूनियन ऑफ स्टेट्स और उसी संविधान के ऊपर मोदी जी ने शपथ ली है तो ये अपमान बाबा साहब का इस देश के करोड़ों लोग कतई बर्दाश्त नहीं करेंगे और ऐसी कोई कोशिश आरएसएस बीजेपी और मोदी जी को नहीं करनी चाहिए जिससे कि देश में फिर से एक बार बड़ा आंदोलन खड़ा हो और जवाब देना सरकार को मुश्किल हो जाए over udaini di stalin's anti sanatan remark comparing hinduism with dengue and malaria sila vetrai vande nam olika than vendum edirka mudiyadu kosu dengue kaichal malaria corona idayalla vande nam edirka koodadu olithu katta vendum but the tamil nadu minister is still defiant going further and pleading that he'll keep attacking sanatan till it's fully eradicated avar valigala tha ambedkar edarkaga po sanda pannaru periyar edarkaga poradnaru kalaingar edarkaga poradnaru inamana perasiriyar edarkaga poradnaru nammude thalaivar indru varai poradi kondirukkar indha sanadana kotpaargalai olikkum varai dravara munnetta kalagam poradi konde dhaan irukum the india block which was silent for days finally started to speak on stalin junior मैं भी सनातन धर्म से हूँ ये भी सनातन धर्म से आप लोग भी आप में से भी कई लोग सनातन धर्म के होंगे मुझे लगता है हमें एक दूसरे के धर्म की इज्जत करनी चाहिए एक दूसरे के धर्म के खिलाफ बोलना अच्छी बात नहीं है गलत बात है एक दूसरे के सबको एक दूसरे के धर्म की इज्जत करनी चाहिए इंस्टेड ऑफ सेंग कॉन्डेम आई माई हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट टू एवरी बॉडी दैट वी शुड नॉट कमेंट्स एनी थिंग विच मे हार्ट द मेजोर सेक्शन or the small section of the people we have to remember unity and diversity but the congress is still a divided house while sonia rahul are silent the official stand of the party is unclear some of its netas are openly backing what udaynidhi said Bharat debate rages on. Does India link us to British rulers? What should be our 21st century identity? Can Bharat and India coexist? Top cultural historians Devdutt Patnaik and Sanjeev Sanyal exclusive on News Track. The national capital is decked up for the power pack G20 summit. A massive beautification drive has been undertaken by the civic authorities over the last few months further enhancing the grandeur of the historic city of Delhi. Apart from the cleanliness drive, art pieces and several eye-catching water fountains are put up. World's tallest Natraja statue 
stands at the entrance of the convention hall at the Bharat Mandapam, the venue of the upcoming G20 summit in Delhi. It took a special green corridor and support of several states to bring the 27-foot tall Natraja single caste statue from Swami Malai in Tamil Nadu's Tanjavur to Delhi. The Ashtadhatu statue is truly one of its kind made using the traditional sculpting technique, the lost wax casting method of the Chola period. Around 82% of copper, 15% bronze and 3% lead along with small amounts of gold, silver, tin and mercury were utilized. Weighing 19 tons, the statue was built over a period of 6 months by 18 craftsmen. Crafted by S. Devasena Thipati, Thapati sons of Swami Malai Tamil Nadu, the statue shows Lord Shiva performing the dynamic dance posture called Tandava, which exudes energy and vitality. Apart from the Natraja, numerous statues and posters adorn the city, showing the diversity of the country. The G20 summit is scheduled for September 9th and 10th. U.S. President Joe Biden, French President Emmanuel Macron, Australian Prime Minister Antony Albanese, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Brazilian President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva are among the G20 leaders who will participate in the G20 summit. Your report, India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. In politics, everyone has an opinion. But I have the data. Whose stock is rising? Whose graph is falling? Track India's political stock exchange. Unmatched, unmissable data analytics. The only show on News TV where numbers do the talking. India's most credible poll tracker. The political stock exchange. With Rahul Kamal, only on India Today. So sorry.
Powered by UBI, good people to bank with. Go powered by policybazaar.com. Her family hogi in short. Good evening and a warm welcome. You're watching To The Point. I'm Preeti Chaudhary. We come to you from the Pragati Maidan, uh, right in front of the Bharata Mandapam. Uh, over the course of the next 20 minutes, uh, our topic of discussion is going to be the special joint session of the Parliament, which has been called from the 18th to the 22nd of September. Well, the opposition, the Congress, now saying, what is this joint session on? Why has it been called? Sonia Gandhi actually wrote a letter uh, to the Prime Minister asking, why has this session been called? You also have Mr. Karge, the President of the Congress Party, elucidating that possibly this is the first point of time where uh, there is no indication to the opposition on why a special session of the Parliament has been called for. Lots of speculation, though, uh, will uh, the name change uh, of uh, India to Bharat be discussed, one nation, one poll be discussed, the UCC be discussed, uh, a woman reservation bill be discussed. All of that in terms of speculation still rife. Special session hote rahte hain Rahul ji. Nahi hote nahi rahe. Ye to bahut hi kam. Main history study kar raha tha. Aise nahi ki koi kuch na kuch bada hi hota hai tabhi special session hote hain. Kya soch rahe hain aap? Modi ji hain to kuch bada hi hoga. Big suspense over the special parliament session this month. It was on India today that Union Minister Anurag Thakur dropped the big bombshell. Kya aapne G20 ke beech mein kya shagufa choda? स्पेशल सेशन होते रहते हैं राहुल जी नहीं होते नहीं रहते तो बहुत ही कम मैं हिस्ट्री स्टडी कर रहा था ऐसे नहीं कि कोई कुछ ना कुछ बड़ा ही होता है तभी स्पेशल सेशन होते हैं क्या सोच रहे हैं आप मोदी जी हैं तो कुछ बड़ा ही होगा अगर मात्र दो ढाई साल में भारत को नई संसद दे दें आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव में आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव मनाते हुए देश के दो लाख से ज्यादा कार्यक्रम करोड़ों भारतीय जुड़े हर घर तिरंगा अभियान में हर घर पे तिरंगा झंडा फहराया जाए तीन सौ सत्तर पैंतीस ए के बाद तो जम्मू कश्मीर के भी हर घर में तिरंगा मोदी है तो मुमकिन है The opposition India grouping has been jittery ever since the center announced this special session from September 18th to 22nd. Amidst political speculation and buzz over the center's likely push for Bharat to be adopted as the country's name, One India, One Poll, Uniform Civil Code and the Women's Reservation Bill. Former Congress President Sonia Gandhi has written a letter to Prime Minister Modi seeking a debate on communalism, a joint parliamentary committee probe on the Adani issue, border conflicts with China and a caste census. No mahatvapurna mudde hai jo hum uthana chaate hai Lok Sabha mein, Rajya Sabha mein kis niyam ke anusar uthaya jayenge उस पर बातचीत हो सकती है पहले स्पेशल सेशन पे सवाल अब फिर एजेंडे पे सवाल अभी अगर सेशन में कहीं गलती से पहुंच जाएंगे तो वहां बवाल अरे भैया पहले आप जो है वो डिबेट डिस्कशन और डिसीजन के पार्टिसिपेट में की पार्टिसिपेट करने की मानसिकता तो बनाइए द इंडिया अलायंस हैज डिमांडेड दैट द गवर्नमेंट मेंटेन ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड नॉट कीप द कंट्री इन द डार्क और इन सस्पेंस कि पहले तो ये बहुत ही विचित्र बात है कि ये एक स्पेशल सेशन बुलाया जाता है पार्लियामेंट का और सूचना ही नहीं दी जाती कि किस विषय पे बुलाया जा रहा है इतना सीक्रेसी क्यों मेंटेन करना है ट्रांसपेरेंसी से चलना होता है डेमोक्रेसी में सीधे मानना है कि अभी सरकार से मुझको कोई उम्मीद नहीं है ये सरकार सरोकारों से दूर चली गई है इन्होंने इस लोकतंत्र को राजतंत्र में तब्दील करके रख दिया जहाँ राजा तेरे सुबह की जय राजा तेरे शाम की जय फर्गेट अपोजिशन पार्टी कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर्स को नहीं पता ये होती है प्रणालियां
And let's cut across to our panelists this evening. Joining me is Syed Zafar Islam from the Bharatiya Janata Party, Shama Mohammed from the Congress spokesperson, and joining me in a short while from now will be Rajdeep Sardesai, uh, our consulting editor in the studio. Uh, Shama, if you can hear me, uh, you had Sonia Gandhi write a letter to the Prime Minister wanting to know what will be the agenda uh, when it comes down to the special session of Parliament. The BJP says, why be scared? Come in. It's a special um, session of the parliament. And, uh, you know, uh, you're coming off the G20. Uh, why get into fear mongering and uh, raise questions?